Welcome to Comfort Avenue number two. I'm setting up my live on Instagram. Hoping that my nose is clean. It's clean enough. Okay, Instagram. It's live, it's working. So I know you guys are getting real tired of me repeating this, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Because if you look at the sky, it's possibly gonna storm. So YouTube, Instagram, um, I owe Instagram video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the perform bound fighting. And the reason why I'm doing that is because there's no time for nothing else. The sky is looking kind of funky and I don't want to ruin my laptop versus my cell phone. It's a lot easier to replace a cell phone than a laptop. Any freaking how. So we're going to do bound fighting. Hands tied behind your back, hands tied in front of you. As always, do not attempt. If you do not have martial art training, do not attempt. If you do have martial art training, but you have not been trained in how to fight with your hands tied behind your back, do not attempt. We will go through the do's and don'ts, and you will either like it or you won't, but I'm not going to teach you something that you cannot use. All right? So, first and foremost, if you are a martial artist and you have been taught to fight with your hands behind your back, then you know some shit. Most people have not been taught this. I'm 48. They don't teach this often, and I don't know if they've ever really taught it in dojos. I was not taught in a dojo, but I was taught how to fight with my hands tied behind my back. We would love to say ancient Chinese secret, but I'm not Chinese, so let's go with that. Now, what I'm going to do is tell you right from wrong, and my live Instagram has stopped. Okay, well, we're going to keep going. Instagram is back. All right, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to do behind the back first because that's the most dangerous of fighting. I understand I'm going to show you before I even put these things on. Right here, right now, I'm going to show you what you will not be doing with your hands tied behind your back. There is a hole here, so I'm subject to go down. If your hands are tied behind your back, you are not going to be doing this. All right? Your balance is off. You are not going to be doing this. That's a tornado kick or a hurricane kick, depending on what style you've been taught between Kempo and Taekwondo. You're not going to be doing that. You're not going to be doing the reverse tornado. You're not going to be doing those. Those three kicks you're definitely not going to use, period. Because your hands are going to be tied behind your back. Your focus with your hands tied behind your back is escape. So I'm going to teach you how to escape. Not from your ropes but from your opposition, all right? The reason why I say not from your ropes, you're not gonna have time in a real situation to escape from your ropes. Now, with a few exceptions to that rule, if you are one of those contortionist people where you can bring that shit from behind your back and all that, or if you can crawl through the loop, my hips don't work like that anymore, so it's not gonna happen. I just got to take my chances and get hit because I gotta show you blocks that you can do and they are not very effective blocks. Honestly, they are not effective blocks. They are usable, <laughs> but they are not very effective on the protection bracket, all right? So when I put these ropes behind me, you'll understand what I mean about being able to protect yourself with these ropes. So hopefully I'm back far enough so that uh, you guys get a full body shot. Plus I gotta be mindful of that hole right there. So we are going to begin now with your plan of action. All right. Again, not a lot of time, so I'm going to try not to be on here more than a half hour at best. If it starts raining, it'll automatically be shut down. Period. Okay. So your hands up behind your back. Sure, I got the extra loops. I have no thing. All right. So for those on Instagram, you can see that I just tighten it up. I need to come one loose because it's so tight I can't feel my blood pumping. So. There's your hands tied. That's America's ass. For those on Instagram and TikTok or YouTube, whatever, right here. So now we're going to get back over here to this position. Rule number one. If you are not a strong fighter, you have one mission. Escape. The kicks that I'm going to show you are going to be the most effective kicks. You will have to figure out when to use them, but for this video, I'm going to tell you when to use them and when not to use them. For instance, if your enemy is on the left, 
and your door is on the left, you want to use your left foot going from an outside to inside crescent kick, which looks like so. You move away from that hole. So he's right there. Your door is right there. You want him over there. So he's coming. Boom. Now you set him in this direction. You're going to turn your hips this way and you're going to get out. If he's on the right and your door's on the right, same concept applied. Right? Outside to inside crescent kick. Boom. Now you set him in this direction, you're going to go this direction. The most important reason why you're going to do that is because of the simple fact that I said you are not a good fighter and that is your best option of escape. You did not escape your ropes, but you damn sure escaped the guy. Now, if he's on the right and your door is on the left, this is where you can use the inside to outside crescent kick or the outside to inside crescent kick. If you are easier to use the right outside to inside, the door's over there, he's right here, you want to keep him over there. So, there, that keeps him in that direction. Or, boom, that still keeps him in that direction, but now you have to work a little bit, you got to turn and go. With the outside to inside, you're going to have to work a little bit. With the inside to outside, just because he's over there and your door's over there, you're not going to work as hard with this crescent kick. So, boom, he's there. You're going this way. The reason why you're going that way is because you're not a good fighter. It's a whole lot easier to run after you kick someone in the face. Hopefully you hit them hard enough that they're going to go down and stay down. In the event that they don't, that's where if you use this crescent kick, this inside to outside, but he, the door's over there. Remember the door's over there. So you tap them over here. If you have to engage, boom, and now you're going to go this way. You should have to kick him but one time, honestly. If you kick him hard enough with that crescent kick and he goes down, you're good. Don't stay there to access the situation. Fuck the situation because your hands are tied and you're going to go this way. Everything you just see me do over there, if the door is over here and he's over here, same concept. Inside to outside crescent kick, boom. You're keeping him there and you got a chance to escape. Outside to inside crescent kick, he's over there, door's over there, so boom. Now you gotta work, just a little, and you gotta take off. Now why do you have to work? Because you have to pivot, all right? That's your work. That's it, it's not that bad. Just a little pivot. Now, in the events that he doesn't go down with that crescent kick or the inside the outside crescent kick, then you may have to engage. We want as less engagement as possible. If your door's over there and he's right here and you nail him, but you don't kick him hard enough, Boom, now you're gonna have to kick him again, and then you're gonna pivot and you're gonna run because your hands are tied. Now let's get on your blocks real quick so I can go into the front so that we can end the live and I can do the same shit for TikTok. So, first off, this is a block. This block is for a kick coming at this area. We can block that bitch, especially if you have enough weight to support that shit. If you're like me and you're a really small guy, I advise you to get out of the way. But if you have to block, this is a block. Let me turn this way. See my hand? It's not effective as, as, as it could be if my hands were not tied. I understand you'll, you'll figure it out. Trust me, you will figure it out. But this is a block. So it's like a round kick. If they're throwing a round kick to your side area, boom, which is waist level, boom, you blocked it. They're coming from this side first because a lot of people are right footed. So your left side, boom. You block it. Sometimes you have to absorb the blow. If you can't block it, you want to get out of the way. When you get out of the way, you want to deliver a kick. Front kick or front kick. You decide whichever one is closest is the one I recommend just because I do Kung Fu more than I do Karate. But for Karate, if you want to add power, when you step back, when you thrust that son bitch forward, or if you want to do Taekwondo, when you step back, turn it around, now you're down, come back, and hopefully you won't have to do anything but that turning round kick. But if you're already engaging and you guys are having a kick fest, this is your block. Because this, that's not going to help you at all. So that being said, if I can untie my fucking hands. Fuck. <laughs> so now we're going to do front. Okay. I don't mind tight restrictions as long as I can control it. Okay, so as usual, what I always go with, your high right, your medium right, your medium right with me, and your low right. High left, medium left, medium left with me, low left. 
These are your blocks. They are to protect all of this and all of that. Alright? These restraints are also weapons as well as a handicap. Alright? Put this thing, if someone's coming at you and you butterfly push and then push up into their throat area, you're going to do excessive damage. Remember, a person who can't breathe can't hurt you. Doesn't matter how big they are, if they can't breathe, they can't hurt you. It is not how hard you hit, it is where you hit. So, now as for your blocks, guys coming at you with the left jab, that'll be on this side, boom. This is a safety block. But it's not as safe as it appears because he still has a hand over here. This is a kung fu block. He's coming at you with the left jab. You want to block to the outside. Throw a knee. Throw an elbow. And you're out. Do not continue to engage. Now if you want to do karate. Start off with kung fu. Block to the outside. Knee to the inside. Other elbow. Now you've just switched from kung fu to karate. Anybody who's glitching out on my live, this will be our Kung Fu Havoc number two. The other videos have not got posted because something got in my way and I didn't get to post them yet, but they will be posted before the end of the night. All right? Now, if you have to block anybody, this is where you have a conflict of interest between martial arts. All right? As a person who mostly does Kung Fu, I always insist that you get to the outside, it gives you more control. As people who do karate, it's more about power and countering. You can't counter everything, and you can't block everything. You can do the best you can, but as I like to say, a thousand things can go wrong in a fight before one thing goes right, so you need to be aware of that shit. Because your life is on the line in this shit, and that's just the bottom line. Someone's throwing a left jab, they're coming at your right side of your face, unless you were in some awkward-ass position where they would be coming at your left side. If they're coming at your left side, you want to block and step back, versus block and try to strike because you still are open to their right side of their body, which they will be throwing a counter punch right there after that left. Most lefts are followed by a right on some form or another, and you need to know that. But if you're doing Kung Fu and they're throwing a left at your left, I don't know how the hell you got there, but you want to adjust and you want to get over here as fast as possible so that you can block and keep control. If you're on this side of my body, I have to work to hit me. Where I'm on that side of your body, you got to work to hurt me. Karate is a lot of counter punches. So if I block and I counter, that would be karate. Where if I block and I strike, that would be more Kung Fu Kenpo. So it would be like I block, I can pull you and throw you into a knee. Then I can elbow you with the same side, which is Kung Fu, which is directness. Or I can switch it, block it, elbow, still doing Kung Fu. But when I get to the elbow part after the knee, I'm going to use this elbow, which turns into karate because I just added more power to the blow that I'm throwing you. That didn't come out right at all, but everything I said was, was principally based. How I said it was not the right words that I was intending. So let's start again. He's throwing a left jab. I'm moving to the right. I'm using karate after I use kung fu. I have combined them both for an excessive reason because kung fu is about directness and karate is about power. So using kung fu, I got him to the left. Now I have control of the situation. I'm going to use a knee. And after I knee him, I'm going to use the elbow for Kung Fu. Switching that to Karate, I'm going to block him. I'm going to knee him. I'm going to use this part, which turns him into Karate, because I add the torque, which adds the power, which adds the devastation. Your strike is going to be somewhere around here. Because I'm pretty sure that's going to be the only thing available. When you knee him, he's going to go over. Do not miss the knee. Oh, that was a raindrop. Okay, so for all medicinal purposes, I got to end the live now because it's raining. But um, you can find this video, our Kung Fu Havoc number two, at some point today. I don't want to lose my computer. So we're going to end the YouTube at least.